Hey everybody, Cynthia Basin from Smart Chick Laser Focus Mentoring. Thank you so much for taking time out of your valuable day to come in and watch this broadcast today. We've got a great discussion about the power of connection, the importance of having a great community around us. So while we're waiting for people to come in live, I wanna thank you for coming into this broadcast. Whether you're watching it live, whether you're coming in to watch it on the replay on Facebook or YouTube or wherever, I just wanna say thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. So I was just gonna check Facebook Live to make sure we're good, but Jeff Carlin just came in. So yay, Jeff, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you being here. So. Before I introduce my guest, everybody, is that I think we all know the importance of having a nice community, great connections around us. But you know what? When you come into this room today and you talk with us and you engage with us, you know, I really want you to take inventory. Do you have the best personal and professional connections around us? So to introduce my guest and get right to it is that this is the perfect person to talk um, about the subject with me, is that he is an amazing friend of mine, Joshua Ello. And so let's get right to it. We don't want to waste anybody's time. We know your time is valuable. So Joshua Ello, great What's friend. Up, How are you? I'm well. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, Josh. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> All right. Before we get rocking and rolling, because I want people to get to know you a little bit. As you know, I'm an engager, so I want to let you know who is already in the room to uh, support you, to support us, and to be part of this great discussion today. So um, give a shout out to Ken Loring. Thank you so much, Ken, for being here today. Sherry Timmons is saying, hey, Joshua. And... Cat <laughs> Ello is going, that's my kid. <laughs> so, funny. Oh, yeah. so funny. So in Joshua, let's see, Jeff is saying, thrilled to see you, Josh. Um, we've got, I can't pronounce your first name, sir, but something Godfrey. Thank you so much for coming on in. Wow, we've got a great showing. We've got Karina here saying hello to you, Joshua. Uh, Stephen Batten is in the house. Thank you so much for being here, Stephen. And our good friend Wendy Rose from uh, Periscope way back and on Facebook. Fingers are in gloves covered with paint. Perfect to be here. She is an artist and she's here watching in. We've got Beth Hoover in the house. Yay. And Joshua, you're a pro. You're like texting inside <laughs> <laughs> of Facebook Live. So, hey, Josh, great for you to be here. Let, you know what? Let me just say this since you just put that up. You guys need to share out and do it now because this is going to be amazing laser focus goodness right here. Thank you, Joshua. I appreciate that. So, yes, everybody, we would appreciate you sharing out because – these are topics that, you know what, are important to all of us. They should be important to you. And so as you all know, for those of you that have known me for years now, or maybe you're just coming in for the first time, is that my whole premise of Smart Chick Laser Focus Mentoring is for you to reduce the noise and really get you focused in on priorities. And one of the biggest priorities is that we need to have the right people around us, right? So. That is what Joshua Ello and I are going to talk about today, but I'd love to give Joshua a chance just to introduce himself to the people that may not know him that well yet. So Joshua, take it away. Well, uh, I'm Joshua Ello. It's nice to meet everyone. And actually, I had uh, Constance Wilson make this for me. Oh, how cool. You can follow me at Joshua Ello and on these different platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Periscope. And, and Cynthia and I actually met on Periscope. Gosh, how long has it been now? Years. No, <laughs> it's yeah. been a while. Forever, decades. Now. Yeah, no, but uh, it's interesting. Can I share uh, how I how how I kind of ran into you and found you? Absolutely. Go ahead. Yeah. So basically, you know, I I just started scoping and I was getting the hang of it and everything, and. Uh, uh, scoping is a term for for you guys that are not on Periscope. It's for it's a broadcast. It means to broadcast. So I was broadcasting, and I kept seeing this this lady come on, Cynthia Bays and Laser Focus Strategies. And I was like, Who is this person? Because you would pop up like everyone would share your broadcast over and over again. And I was like, Man, this is you know this is. I was like, who is this? And then once I finally went in, I was like, all right, I'm going in there and I'm going to see what this is about. Immediately, 
things you were saying just started to resonate with me. And I was like, wow, this is, this is good. This, like what she's saying is truth. And like, this is a good broadcaster. So that was the beginning. And uh, we've just gotten to. And then yeah. somehow, you know, I don't even remember the actual instance, but we ended up getting on a call. And from there, you know what, everybody, for those of you that are connected to both Joshua and I, we've become great friends ever since. And we correspond and talk with each other all the time. So, you know what, this is a great opportunity for us, Joshua, to catch up and talk about a subject that we're super passionate about. So to remind everybody about the subject of the day, the subject of the day is the power of connection the importance of having a great community. You know, first, Joshua, you know what, and we didn't uh, rehearse any of this. What does uh, the word, what does the phrase mean to you, the power of connection? What does connection mean to you? Well, connection uh, basically means uh, authentic interaction, you know, with <laughs> others. And uh, connection is everything. To me, connection is what we were designed for. And, you know, without that, it's, you're, we're missing a big part of life. And, you know, I can't speak for everyone else, but I can speak for myself um, that it's an epidemic, you know, when most of our life, if it's just online and we're not experiencing it, you know, in the real world, real world, then what are we doing? You know, we have to connect with others. So that's mm -hmm. what I think. About that. Awesome. And, and so... Why are you so passionate about it? I mean, you know, you said, uh, you know, community is everything. Connection is everything. I mean, do you have a lot of experiences? We don't have to go into those right now, but do you have good, yeah. challenging experiences trying to find the right connections? Yeah, absolutely. Well, as yeah. a Christian, you know, like it's so important to have community. And, you know, there's, you, there's, there's been a lot of different superficial elements of you know you know different experiences that i've had but uh you know diving in deep with people uh, i'll say this one thing is uh you know you get to there's like the the happy phase right where everything yeah. is romantic and super and and bubbly but then what happens you know offense starts to come and mm -hmm. what we do is because we never got stuff resolved in our family or we had relationships but we didn't you know, get that resolution, but we end up splitting and we think that that's normal. And then we isolate and we're still missing out on the beauty of connection because we didn't actually realize that that's part of the process and we need to embrace that. So, mm -hmm. so we're going to be talking about everybody. And I want to say hello to everybody that's coming in. Lots of people saying hello to you. Hey, Joshua. what's going on, everyone? <laughs> Glad you're here. Thank you so yeah, much. for the numbers supporting. going up at the top. It's pretty cool. I love it. And so everybody, if we do not get a chance to say hello to you sometime after this broadcast on the replay, I know that Josh will go in and, you know, make some comments in the in the stream and I will as well, but trying to profile a lot of your comments. And so if you all have some questions having to do with, you know, developing a good community and before we dive into this community is not just like one community, okay? And this is coming from me. I don't know, Joshua, if you agree with this, but we can have different types of communities. I talk about this on Periscope all the time, is that, you know, you can't expect, at least this is my opinion, you can't expect one person to be your everything. And I always give this example of me being an entrepreneur for a long time now, is that I came from the corporate world, went into entrepreneurship, right? And I'm married. And so one of the things that we always do is we share with our spouses, you know, personal stuff, business stuff. And so, you know, sometimes we make the error of, you know, running things by, you know, the other person in our own home when they may not even have a clue or really be the right person to be talking about certain subjects. And so sometimes you need to have a great friendship circle that, you know, what you yeah. just hang out with and eat dinner with and talk about family. And then, you know what, then there's a different type of community. If you're a business owner or you want to be better in your career, you can have a different community for that. And then obviously a church community you know, uh, you know, people of faith. So, you know, that's the first thing I want to throw out there is that are you expecting people? Are you frustrated by maybe someone 
or a group of people that, you know what, aren't sure everything, is that maybe you need to just kind of take a look at that and say, huh, maybe this person can't be, you know, the person for me in this particular community. And so maybe I need to have a couple different communities that meet my needs. What do you think of that, Josh, before we take a deep dive um, into this? Yeah, I know. I was thinking, I was like, I already, I already went in. I was like, all right, let's go. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's super important because that's the, that's the faulty expectation that we have is that one person is going to meet all our needs, whether it's romantic or friendship or family or whatever. And it's just not the case. So I totally agree with that. Oh, that's, that's very cool. And you know, I'm just, it's so funny because I'm very laser focused, Joshua, but I'm seeing comments like Josh Aroni is in the house. Okay. Jeff Carlin's calling you Josh Aroni. And uh, thank you. Thank you, Kat, very much. I appreciate that, that compliment. I do appreciate that. So yeah. So everybody, I want you to really just while you're listening to Joshua and I have a good discussion about community and connection I want you to think about your communities and is there one particular area that, you know what, it needs to be a little bit better? Um, do you feel like you lack community in one of those areas that we talked about? So we're going to talk about, you know what, maybe a couple experiences, uh, Joshua, if you feel um, comfortable in sharing that, you know, maybe you thought that it was a good community, but ended up not being, or that something that you kept seeking. And I'll share something um, as well, because, when you're not in the right community or you don't have the right connections, you feel yeah. different things, right, Joshua? Like yeah. when you have felt, you know, that you didn't belong or the people, you know, either in your personal life or professional life were not just getting you. What were the, some yeah. of the feelings that you well, had? What I want to say before I say what I say is what I recognize is that it's all part of a process and see a lot of times what we like to do is we take those things that were kind of negative or the things that didn't work out and we say, Oh, that was bad or that was wrong. And sometimes it is, but a lot of times it's just the process of getting to where you need to be. So every season has its, you know, bonus sections that are going to be great. And then maybe not so great, but, um, I wanted basically, oh, what you're saying, Josh, and I don't mean yeah. to butt in. But Go ahead. Go learning ahead. lesson. Are you yeah. learning something from that connection that wasn't so great? And what are you going to do moving forward? Right? Yeah, exactly. And, and another example of that is basically if I wouldn't have had this connection, right, then I wouldn't have been where I am now because mm -hmm. that led to where I am now. And so basically what I want to talk to you guys about is my experience with church, right? So I had a house church a few years ago because I just got to the point in my faith where I said, you know, I really want to have authentic family. I want to have community. And there's so many things happening uh, in the corporate church in general uh, where I felt there was a lot of, um, a lot of, a lot of things that were being overlooked in the simple, just, Hey, how are you doing? Let's, let's do life together. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I found this one church and I got really plugged in and it was a great church. They're, they're still doing wonderful things for God. But I just felt like I was just part of like a system or a machine. You know, even when I would try to make those those efforts to connect and everything on the outside looked like it was good. Right. But on the inside, I was just feeling this lack of connection and um, you know, so sometimes you just take a little deeper dive, Joshua, when you said it was sure. what it was just sort of like that you didn't feel that connection. Like what yeah. were some of the members like? What do they just kind of not going below the surface, just being like smiles on their face and great for you to be well, here? Like, like what was, was it like? Yeah, it was a smile. But everything, uh, everything was all about the agenda of serving this machine. You know, and I feel like that happens a lot in ministry or in a business or even a family. If there's a family goal or whatever, if you're serving an agenda rather than actually serving one another and truly authentically living and building life together, then you're then you're missing that connection. And I feel like that's what was happening because there were mm. two different, you know, and I'm not saying I'm all 
perfect and have it together. But, you know, anyways, so what go, did you want to share? No, you know what? I just want to everybody to remember this word agenda is that doesn't matter if it's in your church, doesn't matter if you know what, that uh, people that you're listening to um, in training and webinars, uh, people that you know what you're connecting to out in the community is that do they have an agenda or are they there to actually uh, be have do reciprocal support with you? Right. Right. Exactly. We're gonna talk, yeah. We're going to talk about non-negotiables. And I think that is a huge one for everybody to take a look at and go, do the people around you have always have an agenda, like something that they, you know, always have, you know, that you just can't be and just be yourself. So go ahead, Joshua. Yeah, you know, I'm getting a little bit of a signal uh, problem here. Let me shut okay. this and maybe that'll help. Okay. Uh, basically, yeah, but I think we're I think we're going to be fine, though. Um, we're good. You're perfect. Uh, you're what, perfect. Can you, can you say it again? Can you say it one more time? Sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, so the part about the agenda, you were kind of talking about that, you know what, that you were in this particular church, but there was this sort of feeling of agenda and not that real connection. So, yeah, yeah so, so you didn't just stay there, right? You decided that, you know what, you weren't going to stay there and kind of move, right. right? Yeah, yeah. And so I left. I left. Um, you know, in good faith that I needed to move, I needed to move out because I was just lying to myself on the inside. I was getting certain needs met that would seem to be to most people be like, oh, wow, that's, that's great. You know, you're center stage and you're, you know, you're, you're getting to use your gifts and all of this stuff, but inside I wasn't really making friendships. And so basically when I left, what happened was, I was, I started to search, you know, I started to search online. I know I even reached out to you and you were like, Hey, get, get on these th platforms and see, you know, uh, if there's anything open. And so I did, you know, some of that, but I just kept feeling like it was the same thing, the agenda, the agenda, the agenda. And then one day, uh, I remembered about this church that some, other people had left and, and started called Sandbox Church, which is where I go now. And I'll tell you what, like w the first day that I went, it w they were meeting in a home and it was such a feeling of family and love. And people, people were like reaching out to me and saying, hey, you know, what's your story? You know, who are you? I mean, it was exactly everything that I wanted. And I waited, I waited, uh, you know, to, before I committed to that church. But the part I want to emphasize about that is that I could have settled. Like I had, I had another church actually try to recruit me as a worship leader and say, Hey, you know, we want you here. Uh, we heard you're great, a great musician, you know, just come, come down. But it was that same feeling. I didn't feel that peace. And so what I would say to everyone is don't settle, like continue your search in the process of finding those connections that you need because it's an important aspect especially for your faith that's a huge deal so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and let's see i like this chris how are you chris he says just because you're going through the motions doesn't mean you're getting anywhere right absolutely right. and yeah go ahead joshua well we just live in a culture where it's, everything is a performance i mean even in even broadcasting we have to be careful you know if are we are we trying to project an image or are we actually connecting with our viewers? Are we being authentic in that? You know, and I think you do a great job of that. That's why you're one of my good friends because you, you always do that. So rock on. <laughs> <laughs> Is Jamie from Sandbox? Jamie's saying whoop, whoop, shout out for the yes. Sandbox family. <laughs> yes, yes, and Karina too. I don't know if Karina's still here, but oh, awesome, awesome. She might be in the comments. Cool. So, um, awesome. So wonderful, wonderful. So, ah, I love it. So everybody, Joshua, just to summarize a few things. If you're taking notes or you're sort of like, okay, I heard what Joshua said, but can we kind of break it down a little bit? I always like to summarize things because things to think about now or after yeah. the podcast is that 
agendas, you know, my gosh, if you've got people in your life that, you know, you have to be some way or you know what, or this, you know what I mean, that there's always something that you're trying to prove. You know, one of the things is that, you know what, someone that always has like demands or something like that, you know what I mean, that you're always feeling like you have to like live up or do certain things, right? You know, just to have a great friendship. That's one of the things that, yeah. you know, you've got that in your life. It's one of those things that, you know, I recommend you think about uh, kind of removing. But one of the things I want to ask you, Joshua, because, you know, I don't know what your feelings are on it. And, you know, as you know, you know, I'm a person of faith, but there is no way that I know the Bible inside and out, just like you do and so many amazing people here is that so many people feel guilty of removing people from their life that are not good for them. I mean, I noticed that yeah. and people feel a lot of guilt sometimes as Christians, people of faith, that you know what, that they're supposed sure. to love everybody, and that sometimes it's difficult for them, you know, to just say, you know what, you can't be in my life. You know what, you're toxic, you're negative. You know, do you have right. anything to say from a faith perspective, you yeah. know, that maybe can help some people today? Because... You know, I say it in more like real language, like you shouldn't be treated like a doormat. <laughs> you know what I mean, that's my way of putting it across. But maybe you can say it in a different way that, yeah. you know, resonates with people that like people you deserve the best and that don't settle like you're saying. Yeah. Well, basically, love has to be authentic. You know, uh, and there's a book, you know, uh, letter first John um, talks a lot about love, the fourth chapter. And it talks about how, you know, uh, many different aspects of love, but we have to be authentic in that love. And, you know, love is not always saying, oh, I'll do whatever you want. Love is sometimes saying, you know what, I have this boundary and it does mean stepping away. It does mean, you know, um, saying, hey, I'm worth better than than you treating me like this. I mean, that's the whole reason that I left. It wasn't a personal jab towards me but I knew that God had something and a place for me I didn't know where it was yet but I knew that I couldn't continue and and I think that's really uh, this is the point of getting getting to what you're saying which is faith requires risk you know there was a real famous person named John Wimber he said faith is spelled R-I-S-K and once you realize that you like have to actually jump and believe that God is going to put you where you need to be, but you can only get there if you take that jump, if you take that risk. And there's so many of us that that settle or we, we, we just stay here in our little place because we're afraid of the outcome or we're afraid of, you know, I'll tell you, there's there's one thing that's going on in my life right now mm -hmm. where I'm getting like serious confirmation about something where I need to I need to do this to bring okay. restoration to, to a relationship where, where I walked away. And what's beautiful about it is that it's coming from that place of faith. So it's birthed out of love. It's not birthed out of fear, right? Mm -hmm. And so if you're in a relationship that's super toxic where you feel like it's, it's always based on your performance because you're afraid, like that's definitely you need to, you know, talk to that person. Right. Talk to them. That's 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 another great okay. point, Joshua. Talk to them. We're in a society that we yeah. don't talk to each other and try to resolve yeah. or, you know, speak truthfully to somebody. Right. Is that doesn't you know, people of faith, people that, you know, just in general, is that so many people want to avoid. So are you encouraging people to have that conversation with people? Like, yeah. you know, what? listen, yeah, you know what? This isn't working or that, you know what? Your energy. Yeah is not working for me and this is what I need, right? So this is another point that I want everybody to take away on this is that number one, you're good enough. Number two, you deserve, you know, a great, great um, community with powerful connections. And if it isn't working, there shouldn't be any guilt, okay? To walking away from that, but talk to that person because that person doesn't know unless you let them know what the issue is. So many people just kind of back away. They don't want to say anything is that it's okay to tell them, you know, without doing it out of love, like Joshua said.
Go ahead. So here's the thing, actually. What's beautiful, if you look at it with a different perspective, instead of being super afraid, and I'm speaking this to myself right now, if you if you recognize, okay, that maybe this this conflict is actually going to bring you closer to one another, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. it's 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 a barrier that needs to be removed, and it could have been there in the previous friendships and the previous, you know, when, when this person was younger, whenever that thing came, maybe they're doing that over and over again in different relationships. And you're the one that's supposed to be brave enough to say, you know what, this is, this is making me feel this way. And I, and I'm telling you because I value our, our connection. If you, if we cannot be in a place to share uh, things that are tough with people and trust that they're still going to love us, then I would say that that connection is not even really that valuable because it's all based on a, on a facade. Right. Um, and, or an agenda, like we talked about beforehand. Yeah. Right? An, ag oh. an agenda, right. How's it going to yeah. serve me? Instead of How's it going to serve we? Absolutely. So it's one of those things, everybody, is that there's so many people, especially with this whole social media thing. I get messages all the time, Joshua, that, you know, this person is, you know what, being a little bit too assertive, a little bit too aggressive, um, you know, or there's somebody in my life that, you know, um, you know, they're no good for me, but they've been around for me for so long. And, you know, I don't know what to do. It's just, you know, I just encourage yeah. everybody is that life is just going by way too fast, is that you definitely shouldn't settle. Joshua and I talk about this all the time about settling. Is that, are you settling? Are you not getting what you need? Joshua said that during what he was talking about. If you're not getting what you need, again, not one person being everything in your life, but if this person you know, is supposed to be in your life for certain things and they're not fulfilling that, don't settle. Don't feel bad about it. Let them know that, you know what? Listen, I want to be 100. <laughs> However you want to say it is that, you know what? This is yeah. what I need. You know what? And I am feeling, don't ever put it on the person that you're doing this. Let people know authentically. This is a really good skill, everybody. If you have a hard time resolving, confronting, whatever you want to say, never say, yeah. you don't do this for me. You don't do that. Focus in on your own feelings and say, so say, for example, Joshua and I had some disconnect. I'd say, Joshua, you know what? Thank you. I just wanted to get on and talk with you. I want to let you know of some things that I'm feeling is that these are some of the things that I need in a friendship. And right now I'm feeling a little bit smothered. I'm feeling a little bit, you know, and I just want to be honest with you is that I appreciate our friendship and I hope that we can resolve it. But there's some things that, you know what, that, have to change from my end. You know, does that resonate with you, right? So when you focus in on that, it doesn't give that pouncing defensive tone, right? I think it's, yeah, I think it's changing our perspective to recognizing that conflict doesn't have to always be a bad thing. Mm -hmm. You know, we live in a world where we want to say, this is bad and this is good, you know, but coming from a place of faith, I mean, Jesus dying on the cross, yeah, that was you know, in many respects, a bad thing, you know, but that, that was actually the best thing in the whole world, right? So it's like, we have to really recognize that when we have conflict, there's a moment where, hey, love can deepen there. And if it's, and if it's not going to be good, if it's not true love, and that connection, then mm -hmm. it's, it's not going to flourish anyway. So, you know, mm -hmm. we have to face that pain, you know, we have to face the fear, really. Right, right. How fast is life going by, Josh? I know you're a little bit younger than I am, but the years do go by fast, don't they? Yeah, I mean, 2017 was scary fast, how, how quickly it went by. And we're in April now. And I'm thinking, man, you know, I made a list. I made a list of goals at the beginning of the year. Um, and some of those things are coming to pass. Uh, actually, all of them have been coming. All of them now, uh, since a day or two ago, are going to have, will be happening or have happened. So it's important to write those things down because, yeah, things go by so quick. 
You know, and I just want to say, you know, just because Joshua and I, you know, we connect all the time, whether it's Marco Polo, mostly Marco Polo, I would say, or, you know, Facebook Messenger. But especially when you talk to someone face to face on Marco Polo, we jump on video calls when we can. I'm telling you, everybody, you know, inner circle, community, tribe, connection, it means so much. I mean, talking with you, Joshua, maybe a year, year and a half ago, what your demeanor is today and your happiness level today since you found especially your church family. Um, you know, it's just like oh, yeah. like a 180 turn. Wouldn't yeah. you agree? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I, that's, that's there's two things that what you said I want to mention. Okay. First is I want to publicly honor you and thank you because you were one of the people that helped me during my depression because I was depressed for a few months. And you really stepped in there. And listen, guys, if you know Cynthia, you know she's the highest integrity. Like, she has the highest integrity. And she was one of the people that would coach me and say, hey, how are you doing? You know, what's going on? Let's talk about this. You know, what's up? You know, and it was it was an amazing thing. But the other thing I want to say is that connection takes time to build. You know, we, we, we live in the fast food society, don't we, Cynthia? And we forget like, hey, you know, like even my friendship with you, it didn't happen overnight. Like we had to build that trust. We had to right. build that, you know, that common ground and, and understanding. And well, this is what she means and this is what he means. And, you know, just to have real talk, I'm just going to say it to get it out there. I mean, you're a woman. I'm a man. It's mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. How do we do this in a professional mm -hmm. way that mm -hmm. is honorable? And I mean, I think we've done it. And it's, it's unbelievable. Amazing. It, it's unbelievable. Yeah. But, you know, and some of the things that you're saying is being respectful, even though you didn't say the word, it's yeah. just being respectful and being able to meet people where they're at. I mean, there's all different types of things. Yeah talk about for tips everybody so make sure you get um a pen a piece of paper something that you can write these things down and kind of do this as a little bit of homework to kind of do an inventory of people in your life and say you know what these are my non-negotiables and these are some of the things that are important and you know what i really need to get better connections like really authentic connections not people like you know what joshua said at the beginning of this broadcast that they're like hey how are you Hi, great to see you. You know what? And then there's nothing else. You know what I mean? Like, I know we've all had those experiences of people that, you know what, you, they do that and you're like, they do not care one bit about me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, they do not care if I live or not. You know, is that, do you have acquaintances or do you have real friendships? As I always say on Periscope, is that this is kind of dramatic. I hope that I never would have to call somebody like Joshua at 2 a.m. in the morning. But you know what? If there was something really that you were going through, like Joshua was talking about depression, are you going to back away from that person and go, whoa, you know? Or are you going to answer that call for that person, the people in your life? You know, I'm, you know, there's so many people in my life, you know what? When things are going great or something like cool happens, like the Good Day Sacramento, everybody, Joshua, wants to reach out to me and talk to me and uh, let me tap your brain and let's go out to lunch. But if there's something oh, yeah. challenging going on in my life, it's like crickets, 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 right? Is that there's a few, like I always say, on the palm of your hand, maybe that you can really rely on. And you're one of those people, obviously, and there's some other people in this stream that I truly believe would be there for me. But take inventory, everybody, and go, you know what? Do you have acquaintances or do you have really powerful connections? So I want to take a look at a couple of these comments, Joshua, and then kind of jump into the next uh, thing here. So <laughs> Deborah Ann says, right, crickets when you need something. And so Ken is saying, this is a very um, informative conversation. Thank you. Um, let's see, right, friendships. Um, you can't do it in a microwave society. I love that. I mean, listen, we're all guilty at one time or another. Hey, Darlene, so great for you to be here that we've jumped into things way too quickly. And so another hot tip that Joshua said was, you know, it's a process is that if you want powerful connection, yeah. you want really good friendships, be willing to put in the time, be willing yeah, to take it slow. 
Yeah, another thing you, that you say all the time is trust your gut. And I love that because, I mean, <laughs> if we would just start off with that foundation, you know, I met someone, uh, I was actually, I met someone recently who on the outside, they were saying all the right things. They were charismatic. They had all of this, this projected, but then I started to really listen to what this person was saying. And I felt inside, don't, don't contact this person. Like, mm -hmm. don't, don't, don't engage. And, you know, at first you would think, oh, that's a, that's a bad thing. You know, like that's, that's not positive. You know, that's not, you know, if you're an optimist, I'm an optimist. So I always try to look at the bright side of things, but I'm learning like not everything is always bright and, and peaches and roses as we've joked about. Right. You know, it's exactly. sometimes it's, you know, there's, there's evil in the world and, and there's some things that are not right. And we just need to listen and we'll, be actually better off for that. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, I've experienced this in my life. And again, I've had like conversations with these people that people that maybe I worked with uh, for a decade, you know, at a job way back, you know, and we were the besties of besties, you know, and that sort of thing. And then, you know what, we've both kind of grown, right? And sometimes there's a season right. like you, um, like Cat Ello is saying, you know, sometimes not everybody should be in your inner circle. And sometimes people are in your inner circle and then sometimes things shift and change. So again, is that you have to take that inventory and kind of say, you know what, you know, this person, just because I was hanging around with them, you know what I mean? For 10 years, I don't need to feel any guilt that, you know what, there's sometimes there's a time, there's a season and you shift and you change, you can still be friends, you can still love them, but you know what, you're not gonna be hanging around with them um, you know, all the time. So there's people on Facebook that, you know what, I used to hang out every Friday night, we'd go out to dinner, you know, way back, you know, go out for and have a glass of wine or a drink, yeah. or something like that. And now, you know what, we're Facebook friends. And you know what, we talked about it. And you know what, we're fine with that. We still love each other, we still like each other, but you know what, we're in a couple different places. So I see that Lisa Bechtel's here. Hey, Lisa. And yeah, and Dan Goodwin says, seasons and chapters of our lives. Be thankful for all lessons learned. Exactly, Dan. Good. And Joshua yeah, said really at the beginning, right, about life lessons and how you use those. Yeah that's, yeah, that's why we have to be careful not to be, you know, not to not to say, oh, this is bad or this was bad or, you know, even in relationships, that we have in, intimate relationships, you know, obviously there's certain things we regret, you know, or that we say, Oh, I wish I would have changed that. But there's yeah. always something positive that is part of the stepping stone to get you to the next place, you know, and mm -hmm. it's, it's really helpful and healing. Here it is. It's really healing because if, if you recognize what was happening in that situation, then you can see, you know, the truth that was there and, you know, how God was working in that or whatever. And then it's like things actually, you're, you're like, oh, okay, that's fine. Now yeah. I understand a little more, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think the most important thing and some things that I see everybody, and I'm not saying anybody in this chat stream, but we've all experienced this, that sometimes we make a, well, I wouldn't say a mistake, but something was bad for us, some sort of relationship, whether it's personal or business, that sort of thing. And then what happens next time? You know what I mean? Is that those same qualities, you kind of fall into that same sort of trap. And so it's one of those things that take inventory of some of the challenging experiences you've had. And we're going to talk about Joshua. Joshua doesn't know we're going to talk about this, but we're going to talk about non-negotiables. His list, my list, at least a couple things that they may be very different between Joshua and I. We're very common, but we also are different in our own stories and our lives. Is what are some non-negotiables that you know what I have in my life that you know what I need as part of a powerful connection in my community? And kind of like we're also going to talk about, you know, some tips, the positive stuff, like what is really, really um you know, the positive things that I want as far as my own community. So let's see if, and you know what, I kept this comment up because I love sure. Jordan's comment. I've kept it up now for everybody to take that in. Thank you for hey, putting Jordan. That. Yeah. Sometimes the people that's, you grew up with can't grow up with you. That's real. That's good. I love yeah. that. I love that. 
And uh, okay, and Deborah says, I've just experienced this as well. I have to listen to what I know is right. And uh, right. Lisa is completely agreeing with you, Joshua, on everything. <laughs> says, we want to see the good. So I'm a little bit behind on the comments. Thank you, Lisa, for your comments and everybody here. I hope I've done the comments justice in trying to uh, profile a lot of you on this. As you know, I'm a connector is that I'm not the expert. Joshua is not the expert. As you can see in all of your comments, there's so much wisdom here and we're learning from you. And when I watch this replay and go through all these comments, the most important thing I always find out everybody. And I say this on live streaming, you know what to do. You have the answers of what is best for you, but sometimes it takes a conversation like this between Joshua and I with all of you to kind of go, huh, <laughs> is that, you know, it's kind of like a little kick in the duff or a little bit of a wake up call going, man, you know what? Yeah, yeah. I need better connections. What am I doing hanging around yeah, really, with really. chickens? <laughs> yeah, really listening and praying, you know, and just saying, hey. God, what do you want me to do? You know, start living, start praying and then listening and responding to what you're hearing. Because if you if you're not doing that, then I mean, I mean, that's there. That resource is there, you know, so it's it's a powerful thing. One of the non-negotiables that I have, Cynthia and everyone. All right, let's jump into them. Yes. Yeah. One of the non-negotiables that I have. And this is man, biggest pet peeve is. Getting back to me, if I contact you and you don't contact me back and listen, I've, I got to apologize to a few people actually later today <laughs> that I dropped the ball on, but I'm talking about consistently. Like if they don't get back to me, look, I'll be, I'll be friendly, but you're not going to be my friend. But why? Because it's showing right there that you don't value me enough to actually care listen actions speak louder than words and if you if you can't make a simple phone call or you can't return a message or whatever listen those kind of people you need to lovingly just just say mm -hmm. you know what bless you and i'm out because that's not they're not reciprocating right, right. and if you're doing that to someone well shame on you and i was kidding. Ah! You, need to, you know you need to really think people about like, oh. why why do we do that? You know, why are we too busy? Are yeah. we trying to, are we insecure and are we afraid? Uh, but anyways, that's one of my biggest things because quality time is like my biggest love language for sure. And you know what? Yeah. You know, we all are guilty of, you know what? Oh, I just don't have time. You know, I want to make sure that I have the time to get back to that person. You know, it's a good learning lesson for all of us that, you know what, to be timely and just even send a quick message back. You know what? I'll send a, a, a longer message later. Just wanted to let you know, thank you for your message. Thank you for your Marco Polo. Uh, uh, Marco Polo. I love that. I love that. You know, so we're talking about non-negotiables, everybody. I've done a broadcast on this a long time ago. I think it was a year ago. I think I'm going to do it again sometime soon. But do you have a list of non-negotiables? Not just in here, written down somewhere, just for yourself, whether it's in a journal, whether it's in your planner, that sort of thing. If you have never put a list of non-negotiables together and you're someone that kind of easily gets duped by people, kind of gets into relationships that are not good for you, I recommend you take those learning lessons from past things that you've gone in and write these up. So I have a list of non-negotiables. And so I'm not going to, you know, spew out all of them. But one of the things for me, and I think you resonate with this, Joshua, but I can't have people personally or professionally coming on too strong with me. Is that, you know, I'm the type of person that, you know what, I'm an investigator for a long time. Is that, you know what people will be like, oh, let's, you know, let's hang out here. Let's do this. Let's do a collaboration. You know, you're awesome. And they don't even know me. Right. And so yeah. one of those things for me is that if somebody is like constantly trying to call me constantly on me to do something coming on way too strong, pushing the pace. Yeah. Just like, you know what? I'm sorry. And I let people know, hey, listen, you know what? I'm not that person. And we're all different. I'm not that person that's going to be talking to you on the phone every day for an hour. I'm not going to be, you know, immediately jumping into something with you as a business relationship. I need to take it um, step by step, you know, in small 
pieces. And that's just how I am. Does that resonate with you? Well, absolutely. And I'll tell you why. Because as we talked about earlier, he good, healthy, strong connection comes over time, right? Anything that's worthwhile, no matter what it is, takes time. Yeah. And if we would realize that, you know, it's like I play the violin. I'm, I'm a professional level in my violin skills, but that's because I started when I was almost four years old. That took a long time to get there, you know? So, yeah. but you, it's the same thing with, with relationships. You know, I've heard it said, you know, you don't have a 25 year marriage, you know, when you've been married, you know, two years, that's because it took 25 years to get that, that. Oh, that solid foundation of goodness there, right? You know, between those two people. So, yeah, love that. So, everybody, I know homework when you think of that word, you know, homework, you know, but this is really something that is important for all of us to work on. If you don't have a non negotiable list, is that it's really important for you to have that for yourself. And you know what? Actually, you know what? When before, you know what? I was married and I was dating. Uh, anything. You know what? I was very transparent. So for those of you that are actually looking, you know, for someone that special someone in your life, maybe you're divorced, trying to get back into the dating game and perhaps, you know, want to get married again, or you're just trying to develop a great circle. You know, you don't have to like sit there and go, okay, everybody, this is my non-negotiable list. You need to be this, this, this. But in conversations, you know what, this is what's important to me, you know? And so instead of just being ooh la la with that person in front of you, you know what I mean? Is that have some conversations that mean a lot to you. So, you know what, if you want somebody in your life that, you know, is a person that has a good, uh, that's faith-based, you know what I mean? And that's really important to you, say it. Don't assume that that person is gonna respect that or that person is yeah. that. Or if you say, hey, listen, I need someone who's a good communicator, like a really good communicator. You know, you don't have to say you need to be a good communicator. Again, put it in I form saying, you know, one of the most important things for me is communication. You know, I need, you know, resolve, you know, to be thing, have things be resolved. So I'm the type of person that likes to, you know, deal with things when they happen. I don't like things to fester up. Right. So if Joshua right. and I were talking he knows now that, hey, listen, there's no guessing game is that, you know what, if something is, you know, wrong or there's a disconnect in our friendship. Oh, Cynthia has told me, you know what? She wants to deal with things on the spot. I'm not going to let this fester, yeah. you know, and impact our friendship. So, OK, so you talked about one non-negotiable or two or something. I talked about one. Is there anything else that really stands out for you? That's a non-negotiable. Yes, yes. Uh, I mean, for, for intimate relationships is integrity. Uh, someone that has to be, they have to have uh, consistency in their life. Um, that just shows that's a fruit of maturity. Mm -hmm. And, you know, fruit of love is, is integrity. Because we live in a world, like I said, where you can get it right away and you can, you know, Instagram or Facebook something and use an app to make you appear a certain way or what. I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous. Uh, but the, that's why going back to what you said, taking things slow really helps to see if there is integrity or not, because, you know, mm -hmm. if it's mm -hmm. a one hit wonder, then well, th that was that. But if it's, if it's going to be something deeper, it'll, it'll prove itself over time person will prove himself yeah you know one of the um the interesting things for me is that you know i hang around you know i have people in my life that are not you know like me you know i like to be around different types of people different types of cultures that um one of the non-negotiables for me joshua is that you got to have something going on that you're looking to grow in life you know i i, I always i think of the people that in my life i can't I don't want people that I'm not looking for people that, you know, are rock star leaders, that they got million dollar million followers and all that kind of stuff. I don't need that. I don't need people to be like You're me. Not, I mean, <laughs> just kidding. You know, I don't want to hang around people that are like me. And it doesn't matter what you do in life. I just need people around me, a non-negotiable that someone that is positive, 
Meaning that, you know what, yeah, you have struggles, but there's always some sort of forward movement that you're working on something in your life, whether it's just your self care and you're pushing forward to, you know, live a healthier life or that you're looking to do something in business or, you know, you're a volunteer at the church. Like, give me something that I can learn from you. You know what I mean? And that I can grow from our yeah, friendship, yeah. some sort of relationship. Anything else stand out for you, Joshua? Well, we've got about eight minutes left or so. This conversation is whipping on by. <laughs> why don't, why don't, do you want to uh, ask questions? Or... Yeah, absolutely. If anybody's got a question, please put it in the chat stream. I should have mentioned that earlier. This time just flew by, flew by, flew by. So is there anybody that is struggling with anything um, having to do with community, trying to find the right community? Uh, removing somebody that might be toxic or negative. If you've got a question for Joshua or I, please put it in the chat stream while we're talking, okay? So also, we're, while we're, they're typing that out, sorry to interrupt you, Cynthia. No, nope, go ahead. Share it out, guys. Share it out, share it out, share it out. we got to get the word out. So share, <laughs> Thank you, Joshua. Share this and, and promote Cynthia. Smartchick.me is her Promote website. Joshua. I don't know which way I'm supposed to be pointing. I think it's that way. but <laughs> JoshuaElo.com. Boom. There awesome. It is. Boom. We'll put his information. Is. Yes. If someone could put that, JoshuaElo.com in the chat stream, that would be great. So if anybody has any questions for Joshua, I, please, you know, let us know. But again, Cynthia Bazin, Joshua Ello, we've been great friends. We found a great, powerful connection through Periscope, everybody. But some of the things that Joshua said, it takes work. It took us yeah. initiating, getting to know one another and becoming good friends, being respectful of each other's lives, understanding our communication. Joshua's level of communication is different than mine. Uh, and you know what? We took our friendship really slow, you know, but one of the things, Joshua, in that relationships are not easy, you know, meaning this is that there's always going to be. That. Yeah. So let me finish this mm -hmm. thought. And I would love you but Go for it. relationships, you know, you can't expect everything to be perfect, right? Is that we're all broken. We're all flawed. We all have things that we do wrong that we need to resolve. But one of the non-negotiables for me, Joshua, and I don't know if you want to take this somewhere else, but it shouldn't be that hard. Meaning that, you know what, if you're right. always like, what's wrong? What's going on? How come, you know, you haven't called or you're being really quiet, right? Like there's not yeah. that communication. Like you're constantly, you know what? It's like just difficult and draining. draining. Is that yeah, you got to be there for people through the rough edges. Mm -hmm. But if you have somebody in your life that, dang, you know what? This friendship, this professional relationship is just way too hard. You know what I mean? It shouldn't be yeah. that hard. Like, Joshua and I, you know what, is that, listen, sometimes we go a week or so without talking, we pick up like we left off. Um, you know what, it's easy conversation, even if it's difficult conversation, is that it shouldn't be that hard. That's what I just wanted to say. Yeah. Yeah, you know, basically, uh, toxic, you know, can be, you know, codependent. You know, when something is codependent, or someone is codependent, uh, they're draining you with their toxicity. They may not even realize it, or that's just how they grew up. But what it, what did we what have we been talking about? Transparency. So what is the loving thing to do? Is to confront that. And if there's no change, then it's put up a boundary and move on, right? And change. Right. And it takes courage to do that. And that's what's hard. You know, you're talking about relationships being hard. I really believe that that's uh, right. Yeah. On. Right. So, you know, we've been on for almost an hour, Joshua. You know, I value everybody's wow. time. I always uh -huh. want this. Didn't this fly by? Yeah, yeah, it did. Flew by, flew by, flew by. Is that, you know, I'd love to give a couple minutes to you to kind of like some main takeaways. Like, you know, we've been talking for an hour. We had a lot of information. I encourage everybody to go back on the replay. If this is something that really hits your heart, really hits your yeah. mind that you're saying, you know what, I really need to take a good inventory. You know, I don't have a great friendship like Cynthia's talking about with Joshua. Wow, how cool is that? You know, I don't have great business yeah. relationships or people that I feel like I can rely on. I encourage you to check the replay for all the details, but what would you say, Joshua, are your main takeaways, the things that you would like, or maybe one point, whatever you want to say, that you would love people to leave with today? 
Well, the first thing is, uh, first and foremost, is your faith. You know, if you if you are good on the inside, you know, and, you know, I believe Jesus Christ is, is Lord. And so for me, it's if, you know, if you're good with Jesus, then you're going to be able to handle every relationship appropriately. You know, you're going to be able to handle it with grace and exactly how you need to, if there's a boundary that's needed or whatever. But here's really the main, the main point is this besides that, because that's the foundation to say this relationships don't just magically appear. Connection doesn't magically appear. And the problem that we have, especially within, I mean, really it's everywhere. I was going to say within the church, but really it's everywhere. It's our culture Mm -hmm. now because everything has gone to digital, you know, social media. The problem is people don't value connection enough to actually work on it. And if we would wake up and realize that we need to actually work on these relationships, we would start seeing the fruit of those relationships and be happier people. And I feel like you do that really well. Uh, you pursue people and, you know, an honorable and with honor and authentic connection. And over time, that's, you know, it, mm-hmm. and it all comes together. So that, that's my, that's my I- little cherry on the top there. You know, I'm going to continue <laughs> on with that because there's always, you know, I always say this on live streaming and I always kick myself in the duff too, is that, you know, yeah, we're, you know, saying things on Facebook, we connect on Periscope, that sort of thing, is that are you not really reaching out to people? Do you need to, you know, make more connection face to face video you know sitting down and having a cup of coffee with people being present i know cat was saying put down the phone right is that i think yeah. we all can think of an instance in which we lost somebody way too early somebody that we wanted to get to know but didn't take the time to get to know that we knew them on the surface and then once they were gone we're like wow you know what? i didn't really realize that that person was so much like me or this person did that or i wish i would have gotten to know them better is that this is an yeah. opportunity is an opportunity for all of us like you said joshua wake the freak up <laughs> and you know wake up Wake up. Yeah. Wake up. <laughs> Wake up. You know, wake up. Wake up. Because you know what? You know, and life is just happening now. You know what I mean? Life is happening now. So don't waste time. My takeaway is this because I have experienced it. Everybody is that, you know, people that were too strong, people that were just, you know what? not good you know part of my inner circle they were good at one time but then you know what some things shifted and you know what these were very well-known people and i had to make that tough decision but right decision that i don't care who these people are you know this person is not good in my life and i've got to remove them and not ever let them come back and you know so don't waste time you know hoping these people are going to go away. You know what I mean? Not talking with them, you know, just trying to smooth the waters. I mean, I want you to resolve, but you know what? Don't waste your time trying to prove, you know, yourself to somebody else. You don't have you know, to be don't, the savior. Yeah, yeah, don't be the savior. Yeah. Don't be the savior is that, you know, happiness needs to start now. You deserve the right connections, the right community, the right friendships um, in your life. And let me tell you something, ever since I have done that, and it hasn't been many, you know, but those people that were truly weighing me down, once I did it, I always say that 15 minutes of uncomfortableness is then a lifetime of joy. It feels like 500 pounds is lifted off your shoulders, off your back. So don't delay, you know, take inventory. And if you need things to change, change them. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, people, when they, when they see that you're, you're, it's an interesting thing that people and I don't think they do it always intentionally, but people use you, you know, and mm-hmm. you just have to learn how to how to guard guard against that, because really people are trying to find Christ in that, you know, they're trying to find love. And it's, you know, like I said earlier, you're not you're not the savior. You're not there to 
to, you know, you just got to discern where your role is in every situation. So, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Everybody, if you enjoyed this broadcast, whether you're watching this live or on the replay here on Facebook, on YouTube, anywhere else, I would love your comments in the chat stream. If you have any additional questions, post them in the chat stream or reach out to me at smartchick.me. I will put my website into the chat stream. Also, Joshua Ello, he will put his in the chat stream as well, joshuaello.com. You know, we want to continue this conversation. If you're struggling with anything, Joshua and I are here for you. Uh, we're passionate about this subject, and it's not just to talk. It's for us to help you apply it to your personal and professional life. So, uh, Joshua, I want to thank you so much, my friend, for coming in. This was a blast. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. This was great. And I learned some great things from you today. So everybody, thank you so much for coming in. Would love your comments to continue and you can still share it out. Right, Josh? <laughs> share the love. Share it out. Share, share it out. out. <laughs> All right, everybody. Until next time, we've got some great shows coming up. Wait till you see who I have next. But I appreciate Joshua Ello, my awesome friend, being here today. Everybody, let's like, take a look at our at our connections. Let's make sure we have the best ones. Have an awesome day, everybody. We're out of here. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.